Good morning and welcome to the service with the difference. It is the 27th of November 2022. It is the first Sunday of Advent. Advent is the four Sundays before the season of Christmas. Um, it is a season of preparation for the season of Christmas. Um, we are preparing our hearts for the coming of Christ as we celebrate the birth of Christ, the first coming of Christ, and as we look forward to the second coming of Christ as he takes us to, to be with him in, in glory. Today we are reading from Matthew chapter 24. We're going to read from verse 36 to, to verse 44. Jesus is preparing his disciples for what is going to happen when the time is right at the end of times. Um, and he is saying, watch out for all of this, but in all things, be, be ready, be prepared, because that day will come like a thief in the night. Um, one will remain behind and the other will, will, will be, be taken. Then we're going to be reading from Psalm 122, um, just a psalm in which the psalmist is rejoicing with all of those who invited him to the house of the Lord, um, because it is in the house of the Lord that he finds, that he finds peace. Um, and so in turn, the psalmist is inviting others to come to the house of the Lord. And then we're going to be reading from Isaiah chapter 2. We're going to read from verse 1 to verse 5, where Isaiah speaks of the moment in which Zion, the mountain on which the temple is built, when that will become um, the greatest mountain of, of all of the mountains. And it's not a particularly high mountain, but it is the mountain where the temple is established. And so the focus for everybody will be on that mountain because of the temple. Um, and then we are reading from Romans. We're going to read from Romans chapter 13, from verse 11 to verse 14. Paul is speaking to the people of Rome, and he is telling them to, to love because the day of Christ is near. So do all the good you can in, in Wesleyan talk. Do all the good you can. Um, don't harm people and stay in love with God because the time is near. Salvation is closer for us than when we first believed. In other words, time is going on. Um, but live as somebody who is in love with Jesus. Don't, don't live in two different worlds. Live as somebody who is in, in love with Jesus. Again, I'm going to ask that you put this on pause as you read through those readings. And as you read through those readings, we give God thanks for them. And we pray that he will bless them to us as we reflect on them in, in this moment. Advent, as a season, takes us on a journey. And, and it's a journey we, we take as we go from looking forward to the second coming of Christ, to a time we, we, we may fear as we await the second coming of Christ, as we long for the second coming of Christ. Um, and it takes us from there all the way to the point where we find ourselves centered in the incredible love of, of God. And that's most evident, obviously, in the cradle, in, um, in the stable that, that holds the king of, of glory, who is born out of love for God's people. You know, we, we go on a journey from the cold and the barren to the source of all love. We go on a journey from the insecurity of this world that is at conflict to, to the very heart of God, um, which is the most secure place that, that, that we can ever find ourselves. And so we're going on the journey looking at what is to, to come to that place where we remember what has already been. For those of us who... Who, who may look ahead to the second coming of Christ and, and be afraid of that moment. Um, I, th I think we would fear it primarily because of the pictures of, of the second coming that have been painted through scripture, through tradition, through, through sermons that have been preached about what's going to happen at the end of time. Um, and this image is of a time when, when the world is at its darkest. You know, when, when does the light need to enter the world the most if, it is not in its its darkest hour. And so today, the, the focus for today, Advent, um, first Sunday of Advent for us is peace. You know, we're looking at peace as we as we head towards the, the source of all love. Um, we know that in that journey we we find we find peace. Um, but where do we find the peace in looking ahead and saying, you know, I don't really want to be a part of the conflict that that lays before me because I want I want I want everything to be peaceful. I don't want to suffer. I don't want to be persecuted for, for my faith. I just want everybody to, to be happy. I want everybody to be at peace. I want everybody to be in love with, 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 with everyone else. But I know that that's not how it is going to happen 
in the here and in the now. You know, if I'm if I struggle with my own rebellion, how much more am I going to struggle with somebody who is struggling with their own rebellion? How much more am I going to struggle with somebody who has embraced their rebellious nature? You know, who believes that they are the most important and most deserving people in in the ever expanding universe. And so I'm often tempted to ask, you know, so how do I find peace in the middle of this this conflict then? But the thing about peace is we, we don't find our peace in the absence of conflict. We find our peace by by looking back, even as we head forward. You know, we remember the shadows that engulfed the world before the advent of Christ, before God stepped down into history as a man born as, as a boy child. We, we remember God's faithfulness in the birth of Christ. And it is in remembering the faithfulness of God in, in the past that we find our peace in the present. It's remembering God's faithfulness in the past that we find our hope for the future. It's, it's in remembering God's faithfulness in the past that we are able to trust God, that we find joy in all situations, that we can find love, that we can find the source of all love, that we find ourselves in, in the very heart of God. You know, it, it is in remembering God's faithfulness in the past that we are able to find ourselves in the embrace of the one who, who loves us perfectly. Our peace is found. Um, not in the absence of conflict, but our peace is found in going on the journey towards the source of all love. And so the message is one, don't chase after peace. Um, don't wait for peace. Be at peace. You know, and it's, in the Old Testament, every time God meets with somebody physically or an angel meets with somebody physically, the words are always the same. Don't be afraid. Be, be at peace. Um, before Jesus' death, after his resurrection, when he meets with his disciples he and, and he speaks about peace, he is not saying, I will, I will give you peace. He is not saying, I, I promise you peace. He is saying, receive my peace. I, I give you peace now. It's a present tense thing. It's not a, a future tense thing. It's, it's, it's already realized. Don't, don't wait for peace. Be, be at peace. Um, in, in our reading from Matthew today, Matthew 24, Jesus and his disciples um, leads on from, from last week's reading. They've just left the temple. Again, the disciples look at the temple and they see the temple as being the symbol of God's presence with his people. And it's a symbol that has been tainted because the religious re leaders either, either don't love God or, or they don't you know, care for God's people. They don't love God's people. Um, and Jesus has just told them when they said, wow, this is an incredible building. Um, look how majestic this temple is. And he has said to them, not one stone is going to be left on top of another. In other words, the false worship of God is what he is talking about. Besides the falling down at the temple, um, the false worship of God is, is going to come to an end. And so the disciples were wanting to know what the signs of this would be so that they could prepare themselves for that. Um, in other words, so that they can avoid it. And Jesus has now told them that all of this is going to happen when, when the time is ready. And obviously now with 2,000 years of hindsight since, since this reading, we, we know that the time we should be concerned about is, is not one time. You know, um, there is a time for, for everything. And everything is always fulfilled when the time is ready for it to be fulfilled. And this is why Paul is saying to the believers in Rome, he is saying, Live as a people who are already living in the fullness of God. Not because you're afraid of judgment, um, but because you have met with Christ. We, we can't leave a meeting with God unchanged. And so live as a people who have been changed because of your meeting with God. The time is ready now. The time is already ready. The time is already fulfilled for you to live in, in the love of God. Stop chasing after things that you think will satisfy you because the only thing that will ever satisfy you is, is right in front of you. Clothe yourself with, with Christ because, because that's your true fit. And it is, it is the only way you are ever, ever going to find peace. Um, you, you don't have to chase peace. You don't have to chase holiness. You don't have to chase joy. In fact, you can't chase any of those things. They come automatically when we live into who we are. Um, not according to our, our sinful desires, not according to our obsessions or our rebellious nature or, or our arrogance, um, but according to our creation, according to who we are when we are clothed in Christ. Every time we, we, we make comments like, but this, this is just who I am, you know, normally it's, it's not who we are, it's just who we are when we have given up trying to be who we are. 
we are who we are when we are who we are in in Christ. Um, you are who you are when you when you no longer live in in fear or when you no longer need to defend yourself um, from others, when you no longer need to protect yourself from others. We are who we are when we are free to love ourselves and when we are free to love others with without suspicion. Um, and that's what peace is. That's where peace comes from. Um, and so both Jesus and Paul, they both speak the same language. Um, they are saying, you know, keep watch, pay attention. Um, Paul says it nicely. He says, wake up from your slumber. You're busy sleeping. As believers, you, you're busy sleeping. Wake up. Um, your salvation is closer now than it was ever before. Stop, stop trying to live in, in two worlds. Stop trying to syncretize your faith with the ways of, of this world. And so living at peace comes, comes at a cost. Peace, again, peace is not, is not something we find in, in the absence of conflict. It is found in the midst of conflict. And, and being a peacemaker comes at, at a cost. And it's not avoiding conflict. It is standing up against injustice. It's standing up against the inequality that, that surrounds us because we can't head into the heart of God without noticing the things that breaks God's heart. We, we can't head into the heart of God without our hearts breaking for the things that breaks God's heart. The conflict between the selfish desires of, of people and, and the, the equalizing love of God is, is always going to be ongoing. You know, the, the, the war for our souls will always be ongoing. The war for the souls of, of the people around us will always be ongoing. And this is the war that Jesus is telling his disciples to prepare for, that, that Paul is telling the believers in Rome to prepare for. And, and how do you prepare for it? Um, you prepare for it in the same way that you receive peace. Clothe yourself in Christ. Be the person you were created to be. Be you without all of the faults. Be you without the anger. Be, be you without the desire for revenge or justification. Be you without the need to win. Be you without the need to submit to your rebellious nature, to your, your, your sinful nature. Uh, the time for Jesus' second coming, the time that we will be with Jesus, the time that we will enter through death into the presence of God is going to be fulfilled. And we, and we don't have to fear the fulfillment of that time. We, we do fear it for, for, for all sorts of reasons, but we, we shouldn't fear it. You know, we, we could fear it because we've still got so much to do and we still have so much to do because we find our value in our busyness. But we should be finding our value in God's love for us and in the work that we are helping God do. And when I'm helping God do God's work, then I'm going to do all that I can do and I have to leave the rest um, for God to do because I can only do so much. God needs to do what God needs to do. Um, we could also fear it because, well, we're not ready to be judged yet. You know, I'm not convinced that God has made peace with me or that I am worthy of, of God's love. And, and if that is our fear, then we need to stop living in, in two worlds. Christ has made peace with us. Embrace who, who you are in, in Christ. You've lost nothing by submitting yourself to your selfish nature or to your self-righteousness or to your arrogance or to your rebellion. Um, but you've lost everything. If you don't submit yourself to Christ and to who you are in Christ, to, to, the, to the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. We could also fear the fulfillment of that time because, well, it's all unknown to us, you know. But we are known to Christ and, and everything is good in Christ. That time might be unknown to our understanding, but it is, it is fully known to our spirits because the Holy Spirit has convicted us that we are sons and daughters of God, that we, that we are co-heirs with Christ in, in life, in, in the gift of life. And so Jesus says to his disciples, stay awake. Um, Paul says to, to the believers, pay attention, wake up, wake up from your, your slumber. God, God is at work. And he is inviting you to be a part of his work. He is inviting you to go on the journey with him to the source of all love, to, to his heart, as he draws the world to him himself. Um, and it's in that journey that we find our, our peace. It's in that journey. It's on that journey that we will know the peace of God amidst the conflict that surrounds that journey. Um, and as we go on this journey towards the source of all love, we we are going to head towards some stuff. You know, we're going to head towards peace. We're going to head towards hope. 
we're going to head towards joy, we're going to we're going to head towards love. And obviously, if we're heading towards that, we're going to be heading away from some other stuff. You know, we're going to be heading away from discomfort. We're going to be heading away from hopelessness. We're going to be heading away from darkness. We're going to be heading away from indifference. Um, and we gain nothing from the stuff that we are heading away from. You know, the, the stuff we're, we're, we're heading away from brings only um, disease. It brings emptiness. It brings discontentment. We, we will never, ever find peace in that stuff that we're heading away from as we head towards the source of all love. We will never have enough with those things. The gift we receive in, in the Christ child and the fullness of the gift that we receive in, in the second coming of Christ is, is the gift of a clear road that heads towards the source of all love. God has cleared the road and God is inviting you and he's inviting me to, to go on a journey with him on this road that heads towards the source of all love, that heads towards the very heart of God. Come on this journey with me. Let's pray. Lord God, you, you have called us out of fear, and you have promised us peace. And as with all things pure and good and holy, we know that we only find that peace when we're in you, when we are with you. And so, Lord God, we ask that you would draw us close into your embrace, that you would widen our own embrace to draw others into you with us. Thank you, God, that there is space in your arms for all people, even, even those people we don't like. Help us to walk the road, Lord, that leads to the source of all love, and, and give us your peace as we leave behind all that we are not when we are in you. Hear us, Lord, as we pray this in your precious name. Amen.